In 1830, the USA was still almost wilderness. Railroad had to be built with great economy, so they could use steep grades, little cut of fields, over rough roadbeds. All these things limited the wheel design of locomotive. In 1837, the swivel four-wheel truck was invented, creating the 440 wheel arrangement. Railroad was still a young and evolving industry. In 1855, designed by the manufacturer Roger in New Jersey, met a specific need. Locomotives that were light enough not to fatigue trucks were fairly powerful and fast to pull passenger and freight over great distances and could reach 60 miles an hour without problems. Very rapidly, this type of locomotive was imitated by other manufacturers such as Baldwin's, Grant's, Danforth's, Hinckley. Because of its extensive use, 25,000 were built between 1855 and 1880. It is a locomotive that won the West. It became known as the American Standard, then shortened to American. The swivel truck has four pilot wheel, four driving wheel or driver, and zero trailer wheel. That makes a 440 wheel arrangement. I always had in mind to have a standard 440 like the VNT railroad that could operate smoothly with a gear reduction for slow motion and a lot of details. But the commercial plastic models are too small with poor performances. I found a die cast metal kit that could be modified with a few missing parts. The Mantua brand the General, which is a little bit bigger than the standard. One word about the General used by the U.S. Military Railroad. In 1862, a Union raiding party hijacked the General in full sight of 4,000 Confederate troops. After a thrilling episode, ever after known as the Great Locomotive Chase, the South recaptured the General. See the movie. Later on, the number 999, the fastest 440 with big driver, 86 inches as opposed to 61 inches, 102 ton, broke the speed record in 1893 at 112 miles per hour. Inspired from the Virginia and Truckee, named after Virginia City and Truckee River, that operated in Nevada during the Comstock load still operate today for tourists out of Carson City. I modified some parts to make it look like the Inyo, the number 22. This is the kit all disassembled. So first of all, I reshaped the boiler to a new shape using a template. On the cap, I added some trim around the window, like over here and at the bottom, and also decorate that window here with a rounded arch. So here's a new motor with a gearbox. The gearbox has a reduction of 4 to 1. I could have found a better motor, but uh, this is satisfying. The headlamp, which can be decorated, a lot of uh, possibilities, will receive light, 12 volt light. On the tender, I added some detail, like the ladder, the grab iron, right here. I'm not too sure what this thing is. And on the called the cow catcher it was missing in the kit I have to make one
So those were missing in the kit. I have to make them. Those are the the wheel fender. There's one one set on each side. As for the band for the for the boiler for the insulation of the boiler, I decided to add those bands. So I made five of them. I'm happy with the result of this painting here. <clears throat> I think it's very satisfying. In true Victorian style, locomotive of the era, as was the custom, were colorful with ornate paintings and detail were lavished, usually named rather than numbered, such as Jupiter, Eureka, Reno, Genoa, and so on. The Eureka showing on that picture, the locomotive headlamp using oil produced more decoration than illuminations. The balloon stack indicate a wood burner the straight stack indicates a coal or oil burner. The bell well polished with decorated bracket. The cab, only the finest cabinet maker techniques were used in construction. Shortcut or quick dirty tricks were untaught of. Using seasoned ash wood, some of them were left unpainted to show the craftsmanship. Boiler insulation secured with Polish brass band. Cylinders were neatly cased with brass. The steam chest covered with cast iron tops. But locomotives did not have brakes. Braking was done by the firemen using the hand brake on the tender or the engineer reversing the throttle. More positive braking was later installed and around 1880, engines were equipped with air brake, electric headlamp, knuckle couplers to replace pins. Train lengths were relatively short, about four car. Later on, the 440 standard were supplanted by the 260 module and the 460 10-wheelers. This picture is showing the May 10, 1979 the 110th anniversary of the Golden Spike at Promontory Point in Utah. The two locomotives are brand new, equipped with air brake and our oil burner. Air compressor pumps were placed out of sight of the audience viewing the reenactment of the ceremony. By soliciting subscriptions from the various counties in the state who gladly paid for the privilege of having the railroad come through their county. Ground was broken in February of 1869, and the 21-mile stretch of track from Virginia City to Carson City was laid at a cost of over $83,000 per mile, for a total of $1,750,000 when completed in the fall. The Virginia and Truckee, the famed queen of the short lines, was the crookedest railroad in the world. In 21 miles, you could make a complete 360-degree circle 17 times if you total all the curves along this route. Its rails were specially forged in Sheffield, England. Some were still in service until they were removed and sold for scrap 72 years later. Its six tunnels were lined with zinc, so sparks from the smokestacks wouldn't burn the timbers. The Virginia was the first locomotive to be put online. It was hauled up Geiger grade by a 14-yoke oxen team. 
Geiger grade had been built in 1862 as the northern route into the Comstock by Davison Geiger and John Tilton. It was rerouted and paved by a WPA project in 1936. The Virginia, built by Baldwin Manufacturing of Philadelphia, was one of 29 engines named after counties and communities in Nevada that hauled the 35 to 40 freight and passenger trains a day through the Comstock. In Virginia City, the train ran down E Street through a tunnel in front of St. Mary's and unloaded its freight here at this depot. The trains were maintained and refueled at the Roundhouse in Carson City. Three years later, the line was connected with the Central Pacific Railroad in Reno. The Virginia City Chamber of Commerce is located in what used to be the bullion car for the Virginia and Truckee Railroad. By the 20th century, the mines have been played out for decades. The final run of the V&T was in July of 1938, bringing to a close the end of an era of steam-driven trains on the Comstock. Twelve years later, the line between Minden and Reno was traveled for one last commemorative run, this time pulled by engine number 27. In Virginia City, old number 27 is still on display near the train depot. Funds are being raised to restore this locomotive and put it online once again. Much of the rolling stock of the Virginia and Truckee Railroad had been sold to movie studios or scrapped, and number 27 is the only original V&T engine left in Virginia City today. In 1976, Bob Gray fired up the V&T line, and today you too can ride the queen of the short lines. Justice, who presides over the front entrance. Unlike most statues of Justice, this one is not blindfolded and both of her scales are even. Justice was always able to see that justice would prevail over the Comstock. Many beautiful homes were built in Virginia City. One that is open to the public is the castle, located on the south end of B Street. It was originally built in 1868 by Robert Graves, superintendent of the Empire Mine in Gold Hill. This mansion still contains the beautiful furnishings that were brought from all corners of the globe to decorate this residence. The Fourth Ward School was built in 1876 and was called the Centennial Building. Thank <laughs> you. 